um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that would shit. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Mm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. I hope everybody's having a great hump day that you're going to be getting over the hump. We are in the dead period of course of the NFL season because we are waiting for training camp and I have to say that I'm really excited because we know that the Rams and the Cowboys will be practicing against each other um, this season uh, in preseason and I'm looking to actually go to training camp right then and there I need to talk to my man uh, Law Nation and find out when he's going to be at camp because we ended up having fun two years ago uh, together doing stuff um, there at training camp we've also got um, Eric Kendricks, the new guy in town, Eric Kendricks, who, uh, yesterday was great seeing that even the OTAs are out, you're seeing the workout videos of him where he is busting ass right now to really make an impact for the team. He will be the defensive leader. He will be wearing the green dot. He will be calling out the defenses. And I think that this is actually a great thing for the Dallas Cowboys because having Eric Kendricks who is so familiar with Mike Zimmer is going to make that basically he'll be like an on the field coach. He's calling out the formations. He's going to be basically the eyes and the ears of the coach on the field. And the thing that I really am going to enjoy even more is knowing that Mike Zimmer in real time is there on the sidelines, holding those guys accountable as opposed to being up in the booth and radio down on the phone and something, you know, it's one thing when you hear, somebody get on you when you're on the phone it's something totally different when you're looking eye to eye and they're in your face telling you what you did was wrong and how to fix it i think that that's going to give us a better impact i think it's going to hold players more accountable because i think too many times the coaches, and this is where the change of philosophy may be good. Typically, when you lose one guy, you, you know, that didn't work out, you end up swinging the pendulum the other way and going in the different direction. Dan Quinn is definitely the player's coach. He's like your best buddy. He is that guy. Don't worry about it, We're going to get him. At least that's the way it seems from what we've seen. Mike Zimmer is also going to be that guy that's a patriarch, but he's going to be the one that keeps a foot in your ass to motivate you. And more than anything else, the Cowboys, do they have as much talent as, say, San Francisco or the Eagles when they won their Super Bowl? No, but they can compete with those. The problem for the Cowboys is they lose focus or they get down on themselves so easy or they make mistakes and aren't held count accountable for them. Well, I can guarantee you when they make mistakes, they're going to be held accountable for them. And Eric Kendricks definitely knows um, that dynamic. So here's an interesting take because, of course, this time of year, they have to find things to talk about. Okay. Um, today on Get Up, they're talking about should Micah Parsons hold out? Now, it's funny because... The, the narrative just changed because the first part of the offseason, it was the Cowboys should blow it up. They shouldn't pay CD. They should trade him. You know, Micah Parsons, you know, he's a diva. The team is getting tired of him and things like that and get rid of him. You know, Dak Prescott, yeah, he's got great regular season numbers. You know, he's up there with, with uh, the last 28 games. You look at what he's done uh, as far as like with Pat Mahomes, you know, in the regular season is great numbers, but he just sucks in the playoffs is the narrative. And they should get rid of him. You know, they should go out and, and get Kirk Cousins to come in. And now the narrative is, well, they need to sign all three, but they can't sign all three. And that Micah Parsons should hold out and demand to get paid. Now, here's the thing that's funny is 
knowing that the Dallas Cowboys don't pay anybody until their contract is up. They don't pay anybody until it's the last year of the contract. And generally speaking, we'll franchise tag him. Remember, Dak Prescott, who is the ultimate gamble because he has no trade clause and has no franchise tag eligibility. And they're rolling the dice with him. You got CeeDee Lamb, who you've got for this year with the fifth year option and you can franchise tag him. You're two years away from having to do that with Micah Parsons. So saying that he should hold out, well, here's the thing. You can hold out in preseason if you want. You can do that. You can do that. You can be a disgruntled employee if you want. You can do that. But the reality is, is you're not getting that year occurred unless you're playing. So there's not really options. But let's listen in and see what they have. extension for Micah Parsons. Our own Chris Canty had a very interesting take on how that defensive star should handle the situation. Micah Parsons shouldn't step foot on a football field this fall without a new deal. Micah Parsons is the best player on the damn team, and he's scheduled to make $2.9 million this year. Micah Parsons needs to take a page out of the Ezekiel Elliott playbook and demand that the Dallas Cowboys pay him his money right now. That's our buddy Canty on ESPN Radio. Dan Orlovsky, you're shaking your head. You agree? He's 100% right. Micah Parsons shouldn't step on the field without a new contract. Which one of the big three in Dallas is going to play the hard game, the long game? Is it going to be him, Dak Prescott, or CeeDee Lamb? It's going to be hard to pay all three of those guys what they're worth, in my opinion. And Micah Parsons is arguably the most disruptive edge in all of the NFL. Him, Miles Garrett, T.J. Watt into that conversation. Greeny, the last player in the history of the NFL to have 12 plus sacks in seasons one, two, and three of their NFL careers, a guy named Reggie White. Mm-hmm. For $2.9 million, there's no way that Micah Parsons should risk injury, risk lessering his value, if that's possible, by stepping on the field for the Dallas Cowboys. Those guys need all to get paid quarterback, wide receiver, and defensive end. This is why I love this time of year, Greeny, because it is show me what I'm worth to you season. And I love that because this is the time where if you have leverage, if you are star talent and you know that your team deems that you're special, that you're versatile, that you are a leader, that you, when your name is mentioned with all time greats, yeah, I can't be making 2.9. Like that's not enough. Like that's wild. And and unfortunately for the Cowboys, they put themselves in this position, but that's not on Micah. I don't think any player who wants to maximize his leverage should play. If he, especially if he is a cornerstone Wait, guy. wait, wait. They put themselves in this position, you mean, by drafting players and developing them? That, they, that, that they, they're at fault for that? That that's, that's something that, that's a, oh my God, how dare you draft guys and then become all pros? You put yourself in this position. Shame. Shame, Cowboys. I honestly Right, I get it. Uh, here's the thing. Are they going to have to pay C.D. Lamb because he is much closer, he's, he is closer to the end of his contract. Dak completely controls his own situation. If I'm Dak, I'm playing it out. I'm not signing a contract if I'm Dak, and I become an unrestricted free agent at the end of this coming season, and I make a trillion dollars in my next deal. The interesting one will be whether or not they do Micah Parsons because the way the contract situation is set up, Dan, he doesn't have a lot of options if he decides to hold out. Yes, he does. They can't make the playoffs without him. Uh Um, uh, The reality is all three of those guys – if either of them held out for any amount of time, significant amount of time this year, the Cowboys cannot make a playoff run, and they won't make the playoffs. I, I think they're the sixth best team in the NFC right now with all three of those guys. Mm. If any one of them, specifically Micah Parsons, says, I'm not playing, they can't make the playoffs. So while he may not have leverage when it comes to the three seasons, going into his fourth season, they can't make the playoffs without him. You expect this to get done quickly? All three of these to get done this offseason, Kmart? Uh, I don't know where I don't know how they're going to do all three. I don't. Um, to me, Mike is Mike is critical, um, and and so I don't know. Dak, I would love for him not, for him to play hardball, but will he? I think I, they'll I get think, CD and Micah done. Yeah, I, if I'm Dak Prescott, I'm not even considering signing a he contract. Should not. He's going to get a year away from, from being a, a, a legitimately great quarterback who's an unrestricted free agent in this league. I can't think of anything better to be than that. Yeah. There you go. So, 
that's their thoughts on Micah holding out. But it's in the end, the Cowboys had to get this thing worked out. They just have to get it all worked out. Um, the one that's interesting to me is, is I don't think Micah Parsons is, he's going to be the one that's going to have to wait. I'm sorry. Um, maybe he does hold out. I don't see that happening uh, because, you know, he's it's not like he doesn't have another thing going on. Of course, we haven't heard anybody talking about, you know, Micah Parsons gets all these endorsements that he's the president of Bleacher Report and this, that, and the other, like they did with Dak Prescott. The urgency has to be getting C.D. Lamb done because he's on that fifth-year option and get yourself some cap relief. The next one really needs to be Dak, and he could do them both at the same time or one before the other. It doesn't matter. Dak's to get yourself some more cap relief to be able to sign uh, Micah Parsons to the extension. But the reality is, is Micah Parsons' deal is $5 million this year. You don't want to mess with that $5 million. You want to go ahead and say, we need that money elsewhere. C.D. Lamb, who is 17.8, you could do, you know, pay him Justin Jefferson money and get him a four-year deal slightly above his and have an $8 million cap hit this year and $15 million next year, where it makes all kinds of sense. Because then you got an extra $9 million to play with. Dak Prescott, you got 55 this year. I think, honestly, their best thing is pay him the 55 this year, get him the extension that starts working next year, and spread out that $40 million and actually reduce that $40 million debt hit next year to make it more palatable for your team. But, hey, I, I, I you know didn't go to work at Marketplace Grill where I could be a capologist for Stephen Jones, you know, I'm not a chemical engineer where, you know, I'm, I'm making caps and contracts and stuff for NFL players. I'm just a, you know, small businessman trying to run a business here and, uh, you know, just throwing out there my ideas, you know, the village idiot, just like all of us here on YouTube. As always, good people, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's good to be home, and I got a lot of work to do here at the house, so I'm going to get started on getting some of this stuff fixed. And I will see you guys real soon. Peace out. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.